Welcome to the Junk Room, everybody. Today we're going to do what... I can't do this. It just feels stupid sitting on the side of a table. Hold on. Welcome back to the junk room, everybody. It's me, the junk man, coming back at you. I feel a little better. I feel out of place. I know I'm trying to try some new angles and everything. Oh, that angle just wasn't for me. Whew, that's a lot of moving around. Now I'm out of breath. Okay, what we're going to talk about today? Well, this might be a new series. I haven't decided yet. We'll see how you respond to it. It's where we take a look at some lesser known toy companies. Now, there's a lot of toy companies out there. Mattel, Hasbro, McFarlane. Kenner used to be for Hasbro on it, Tonka. We know all the big major names. And then there's some that just never really caught on or they died out really fast. That's from my childhood, we may not even know the names. I mean, you have Remco, of course. You have Playmate Toys. You, I know Playmate, that was just a joke. Playmate Toys is still around. But you had a lot of little smaller toy companies. Most of these sold toys on what is called the toy rack. A little spinning rack at a Family Dollar or a Revco. Uh, somewhere like that. It wasn't, they usually didn't get much retail space. You might find them at a gas station. And today we're going to talk about one from New York City. That's right, New York City. And it was called Fleetwood Mac. Sorry, just Fleetwood. There was no Mac involved. This company ran from the 70s until about the late 80s. And let me tell you, they had more license than you would believe. Put it this way, if Hasbro, Mattel, or one of the bigger toy companies didn't want one of the licenses, believe me, Fleetwood would take it. I mean, we've got everything from Vegas. Remember that television show? Who remembers Vegas? Yeah, did you know they made toys for Vegas? We have Vegas. We have the first Ghost Rider toy by, by Fleetwood made it. Did a whole video on that, the first Ghost Rider toy. We even have Love Boat stuff, The Fall Guy, BJ and the Bear. Oh, could talk all day about them, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to go through a list of some of their hottest toys and talk about each one. Let's start at the top of that list with the A's, Amazing Spider-Man. And this is a type of toy I forgot. Now, I did a lot of different other kind of Spider-Man toys, but check this one out here. In 1978, they released Action Box Spider-Man. Do you remember these? I forgot all about these. They had like little legs that were just you shake it and they, oh they were just creepy to me i don't know what the point was i don't remember what you're supposed to do with these i, I don't know if you maybe you wound it up in the back and it moved by itself i can't really remember i just remember it was freaky because i was shaking the little box and the spider man I, they made a bunch of different ones but i had a spider man one of the legs would just dangle it looked like he had broken kneecaps or broken elbows i think they both moved there it was creepy, and I forgot all about these toys until working on this video. So, like I said, they did a lot of Spider-Man stuff in 78 into 79, and that was one of them. And here's one a little into the 80s. Can you believe they made an action figure line based on American Ninja? Remember that movie, Through the Ninja Craze? I did a whole video about the Ninja Craze. You can check that out. Everyone in the 80s was really into ninjas. And Fleetwood took advantage and released action figures and play sets or rack toys from American Ninja. Check this out. It's a Mike Duke Dukinoff. Mike Dukinoff. Hope I said that right. Apparently, he plays Joe in American Ninja. And here he is, an action figure him. Because with a sword and my personal favorite ninja weapon as a kid, a nunchuck. Now, I'm guessing it's supposed to be the main guy in front of the flag here. But it looks like the guy in the back that's dressed like a ninja. Now, of course, Mego had the rights to the Buck Rogers action figures. But... That didn't stop Fleetwood from trying to get their hands on some Buck Rogers toys also. They went to, I guess, whoever owned the rights to them and said, Hey, let's do some cheaper rack toys from Buck Rogers. Which was, at that time, probably still going by its original title, Buck Rogers and the Buckaroos. Let's take a look at what Fleetwood released. And here's a laser light pistol to release under the Buck Rogers name. I'm going to refrain myself best I can from making a LBGT rainbow 
joke here. I'm going to try my best. Believe me, they're in my head, but I'm trying to turn over a new leaf. But as you can see, they did other Buck Rogers toys also, like these two ships. And you can't talk late 70s or early 80s while bringing up Chips, California Highway Patrol. I don't know why it has an S on it. I don't know what the S stands for or the I. California Highway Patrol. It's California, I get that, Chips, C-H-I-P-S. California Highway. Don't know what the I is for. Let's check out what Fleetwood did. Now these are, as you would classify for sure, rack toys. You got the plastic handcuff. You got the revolver gun that shoots the little plastic darts. You got some generic police cars. You got another gun that comes with a police badge. Then you got the gift set that would come with a plastic handcuffs, a plastic gun, a walkie-talkie, even a police whistle, and a police badge, and of course that, what do they call that? I know what we used to call it in the South, but I'm not about to say that in this video. Uh, they call it a billy club, maybe? Is it okay to say billy club? Of course, you got some sunglasses and other things. Also, you can look like Ponch or John, whatever one you prefer. And Fleetwood had a lot of rights to the Marvel characters, like Fantastic Four. And did you know Human Torch drove a car? Check it out. It says it's not recommended for children under five. But believe me, if you're over five, you probably didn't want to play with this thing. So they should say recommended for children under five. But here's the Human Torch in his car. Now I admit I'm not an expert on Fantastic Four or their supercars. Maybe there's a comic book out there where he drives around in a car. But if you ask me, it seems like it would put out his flames, wouldn't it? Riding around, especially in a convertible. It looks like he would lose all his power. Let's see what else next is on our list. The original Macho Man, the Karate Kid. He got a line of role-playing toys, which is probably some of the worst role-playing toys ever. I have to use these quotes because they're not really seem much like role-playing toys. Take a look. Here's a role-playing set that comes with a drum and a headband. Woo, that's exciting. They didn't even try to make it look like the headband that the character has on the card. And here's one that you at first think it comes with throwing stars, but sadly it comes with safety star dart. How boring. Rubber throwing star. No kid's going to be able to kill anyone with this one. What a bummer. And they also come with a star bag. I don't even know what a star bag is. I guess it's a bag to put in your safety star darts. It also comes with a headband that says karate. This has got to be some of the most boring toys I've ever seen. They even made toys from the Lone Ranger. Yep, the Lone Ranger. I didn't say the Lone Rangers with an S. I'm not talking about that hair metal band that broke into that radio station to get their music played. I'm talking about from the 1980 movie, Lone Ranger. The one everyone wanted to be a big hit, but it was a big flop. Here's one set of figures they did. Hand-painted action figures. Hey, Fleetwood, you're really using the term action figures loosely here. These are not what I would consider action figures. I see nothing action about them. Now, whenever I ask, what was a movie that didn't get action figure lines in the 80s? Without a doubt, the first hundred people will tell me, Patriot. No, I'm not talking about that Mel Gibson movie. I'm talking about the movie from the 80s starring, who was it starring? Greg Henry. I don't know who Greg Henry is, and I'm just fooling you. I never even heard of this movie, but apparently there was a movie called Patriot starring Greg Henry, and they made a figure for it. Released in 1986, the same time the movie came out, you have the Patriot action figure. It comes with what I believe is a bazooka, an iPad, an iPad, and well, that's what it looks like to me, a Rambo wannabe knife, and some binoculars that look like he wouldn't even fit around his head. Now, I've never even heard of this movie. I've never heard it as being talked about it being bad. I've never heard it being talked about being good. I've never heard about it at all. And I doubt there was any kids out there screaming for the Patriot action figures. But I can tell you what they were screaming for. Action figures, or toys anyway, from T.J. Hooker. I spent a lot of Saturday nights watching T.J. Hooker at my grandmother's house. We both really love the show. This is the same generic toys you would have saw in the chips line. A little like they just repackaged it on a TJ Hooker card. I actually would just love to have one of these TJ Hooker cards. You got the Los Angeles Police Department police car. You got a badge with a gun. You got some kind of Bronco car. Looks like it comes with a screwdriver. And you got the gift set that comes with that Billy Club or you know what they call it also. And you had the little dart gun. But this time it comes with little targets you can shoot at for extra fun. 
Now, like I said, they had the Marvel rights, so they made a lot of Marvel toys. I keep saying action figures, but a lot of these are just toys. And can you believe it? They made Sergeant Slaughter toy line. Did I say Sergeant Slaughter? Sergeant, what was his name? Fury. Sergeant Fury. Here's a boat with a little army guy laying inside taking a break from some action. The Beach Assault, Sergeant Fury from Fleetwood. Now, as long as we're talking to Marvel, let's talk about two things kids love. Superheroes and stamps. Yep, stamp sets. These were pretty popular. They turned about everything they had the rights to in the stamp sets. This would come with an ink pad, a little stamp made out of plastic, and you would just stick it in there and then stick it on stuff until your parents yelled at you for ruining the furniture. Believe me, they will yell at you if you put the stamps on furniture or walls. Parents are just no fun at all. Now, trust me, these aren't the stamps that you lick and you put on an envelope to send off to get a free Star Wars figure. Believe me, if it was, I would have that Admiral Akbar figure that I sent off for. But apparently, the mailman, at least in my neighborhood, likes to pick up an envelope with a stamp on it that's not really a real stamp, but just a ink stamp, and take it and throw it in the trash. Now, I don't know if this is Marvel or not. Maybe you do. Space Sentinels? I never heard of this. But apparently it's some kind of action figure. They call it an action figure. Well, I think they call it a metallic action figure. It looks like just a metal figure. Yeah, that's what you want to give kids. Metal toys. You know how many little sisters have stitches in their head thanks to metal toys? Let's take a look at this. Space Sentinels magnetic figure. Stand it up and I... It looks like it comes with a ring, so you can have the metal connect to the ring, and I don't know what she's supposed to do with this thing. It doesn't look fun at all, but apparently they made one. But Fleetwood really wasn't about fun. They were more about what cheap toy can we put on a rack that will grab the attention of a kid until they bug their parents to buy it for them. Now, I did a whole video on the first Ghost Rider toy was released by Fleetwood, so let's take a look at it. I'm not going to say much. Like I said, I've done a video. Just go to my video section, hit the search, and type... Ghost Rider. I'm sure you'll see it, and I might even link it to it in this video. I'm not sure yet, because I also did a video all about rag toys, and I might link it at the end. But here it is, Ghost Rider. Does anyone out there remember the 1984 television hit, Mammal? No, no one probably remembers it, and no one was asking for action figures, but Fleetwood was there just in case, with one figure. According to the packages from Mammal, I don't exactly know what this is. This is some guy turning into some kind of gorilla snake. Maybe you know more what this is. I remember Mammal, but I don't remember much about it, so maybe you know this is what this is for Mammal. Maybe you're like, oh, that's the best part of Mammal. Nobody ever watched it, and I can't believe I didn't see Mammal. I said it so many times, it don't even sound like I'm saying it right. And knowing me, I'm probably not. Let's see what else we can talk about. Another thing kids screamed about in the 70s wanting toys of was Emergency. Remember that television show about a bunch of people that drove around in an ambulance? Or maybe it was a fire truck. I think it was an ambulance. Anyway, look, and here's another damn stamp set. Don't try to use it in the mail envelope to get a free figure. Oh, I already talked about that. And here's another one that comes with a radar gun. Wait a minute, I think that's a flashlight. A rescue flashlight with three lenses. And it actually comes with a battery. Flintwood, thank you. It came with a battery. You can't say that about the big boys. They never put batteries in shit. And did you know the guy from Emergy was this guy? I seen him on Lost. I seen him on Freaks and Geeks. I seen him in a bunch of stuff. And it didn't hit me until like last week that this was the guy that played this on Emergency. Looks just like him. I don't know why. I just never compare the two. Well, let's talk about Sword and the Sorceress. I don't know what that is either, but I'm sure you do, and you'll tell me in the comments section. I'm guessing it's something Marvel, because they had a lot of rights to Marvels, and this looks like a comic book thing. Here it is. The Sword and the Sorceress. It doesn't look like much fun. Just some plastic figures. At least they'll stand up. I mean, they're molded onto a base. There's a fantasy adventure set. Maybe it's not based on a Marvel or anything at all. I don't see anything that says Marvel on the package, so maybe this is something Fleetwood just made up on their own. I do find it odd that the creature that's all red is wearing green underwear and green socks, and the creature that's all green is wearing red socks and a red, I don't know, a tank top or something. They all have just swapped clothes, but then they wouldn't even be able to tell they had clothes, so maybe it's good they didn't swap. Did you ever want to have a Kenworth and act like it was hauling logs? Well, you probably couldn't with this set, but you could act like you had a semi-truck with a bear inside. We're talking toys based on BJ and the Bear. Yeah, it's BJ and the Bear. The BJ and the Bear Kenworth truck. You get one with or without the trailer. Why would you buy the one without the trailer? I don't know, unless your parents were just being cheap asses. Now, there's one stuntman that makes Eastwood look so fine. He even dated Cheryl Teagues, who we're talking about, Colt Seavers, the Fall Guy. And here they are with the generic rat toys from the Fall Guy. You get the Fall Guy truck, hey, that's worth it right there. And you get a police car, which is probably the same police car that showed up in the Chips line or the TJ Hooker line. 
You get a Formula racer car. I don't remember that in the fall, guy. You get another truck that comes with barrels and that damn screwdriver again. Why do they keep trying to give kids screwdriver? Hey, Flintwood, kids didn't want screwdrivers. You got some little mini cars. They look like cool. It's part of those pullback actions where you pull them back and they zoom across the floor. I always love those. You had that helicopter where you pulled the string and the helicopter flies up. That was fun for about five or six times and then it would crack and wouldn't be fun anymore. And you have what everyone loved about the fall guy, the Colt Seaver fighter jet. Yeah, I must have missed that episode also. If you're making Fall Guy toys, you got to make the A-Team toys. Yep, A-Team rack toys. Some of the generic stuff again, you got the helicopter with the pull the string action and it flies up in the air. You got the walkie talkies we've seen already. You got the gun that you put the little plastic darts into. You know, like in that movie Tag, the assassination game. No, I'm not talking about that stupid movie from a few years ago that took the name. I'm talking about the Linda Hamilton classic movie Tag. You got a helicopter, you got tools. I don't know why you got tools, but you do. And you got some cool, cool sunglasses. Now, if you wanted to make a television show in the 70s that starred Harrison Ford, you couldn't do it. Harrison Ford wouldn't do a television show. But you know who would? The next best thing when it comes to television, the Harrison Ford of television, Robert Urich. And if you make a television show with Robert Urich and set it in Las Vegas, you can call it Vegas and go to Flintwood and get toys made of it. And here it is, the Vegas Rack Toys by Fleetwood. You got a big va you got a big badge that says Vegas, plastic gun and walkie-talkies, another walkie-talkie set that I'm sure didn't work at all, and another set that comes with a gun, and a watch, a digital watch. Woo! That one is probably the most expensive rack toy ever. I bet it's about $2. Ooh, a digital watch. I was always a sucker for a watch or a compass. I don't know. I didn't even know what a compass did, but I always wanted some toy that had a compass in it. Anyway, that's Fleetwood Toys. As you can see, they had license to almost everything in the 70s and 80s, at least anything the bigger guys didn't want. And we didn't look at everything. I looked at the most well-known toy lines from TV shows and movies you would know, except for the Patriot. Still don't know what that is. And we didn't even look at everything they made for each toy line. I mean, it would have been an hour or two hour video. No one wants to see that. Think of this as more of a best of. You can Google the rest of them if you want to. And, wait a minute, I just saw my list. There's one we didn't even look at or talk about. The Fleetwood Love Boat Barber Set. I don't even remember a character on the Love Boat that was a barber. But if you wanted that like you were Captain Stubing getting your hair cut, this was a set for you. A Love Boat Barber set. Damn, Fleetwood. What? I've heard it all. I just gotta go. Fleetwood, you gotta make everything, Fleetwood. You could have said no to something, couldn't you? Shit. Surprised you didn't make a gopher gopher doll. If you're just going this crazy with it, why don't you just repack some of those plastic guns and do a Love Boat gun line? Ugh. Oh. I can't even look at this stuff anymore. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comments below. Did you have any of these Fleetwood toys? I kind of hope not. Thank you for watching. Oh, I am out of here. Hey, Jumpman <laughs> channel popping, though. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony. <laughs>